Hi, I'm Susan. Well, for many of us, the thought of making jeans can be quite intimidating, but I've looked at different YouTube videos and I've come up with the simplest methods that I could find to make a gin. It is so easy, guys. It's so easy. Okay, so feel free to navigate through the YouTube chapter headings. I'll be showing you how to make the gin fly very, very easily. I'll show you how to make the front and back pockets very easily. And I'll also be giving you tips of how to adjust your machine and what presser foot you should use for what purpose. Okay guys, so let's jump into the video. Hey guys, so um, today we'll be using the Moulin Ensemble denim trousers. Uh, we'll be using model 2 which is the slim fit denim pattern and this is what you'll need. You'll need a short jean zipper Mine's a bit long because it's the only one I could find in the store. You'll also need rivets and snap buttons, but I will be using a metallic button. You'll also need the regular threads and also the denim jean threads. You'll also need interfacing. Okay, so let's go over each pattern piece. This pattern comes without a seam allowance, so I added half inch seam allowance to all pattern pieces. So we'll start with um, piece one, uh, which is the fly facing, cut three out of fabric. We have piece two, the waistband, cut two out of fabric, but it has to be on fold. Pattern P3, front trousers, cut two, out of fabric pattern piece four pattern piece four is the back trousers cut two out of fabric and don't forget to put the markings by markings I mean pockets okay same as um, pattern piece three don't forget to put these markings the pockets pattern piece five is the back yoke Cut two out of fabric. Pattern piece six is the attached pocket. Cut two out of fabric. Pattern piece seven is the pocket mirror. Cut two out of fabric. And pattern piece eight is the pocket bag. Cut two out of lining fabric. Since I'm making skinny jeans, I went ahead and I used the black stretching jeans material so as you can see this is what i did for all my pieces i simply folded the fabric and then i placed the patterns on top and then i went ahead and cut and ended up with uh, something like this and then um, don't forget to place your markings on top like the pockets for the pockets i went ahead and i used um, tracing paper tracing carbon i think so what I do, I, I like put it down here and then I use a tracing wheel, you know, to put those markings. So here I already put my markings, I don't know if you can see that, and then it will also appear down, down at the bottom. So this is what I did for all the pieces. Yeah, so these are all the pieces that I've cut. It's now time to assemble the gin. But remember, I put half an inch seam allowance, the whole gin trouser. But for this fly section, only this area, I put one centimeter seam allowance. So one centimeter seam allowance here, and then the rest of the allowance is half inch. So let's go ahead and assemble the gin trousers. So yeah, we are going to start by preparing our pocket pieces and I will start with the inner pocket. Okay, make sure that the inner pocket is on the right side of the trouser. So what we're going to do first is just fold by half an inch, both sides. Fold it like so and then just go and iron. Okay, now that we're done ironing the sides, what I'm going to do is flip it over. Uh, this is the top part and this is the bottom. I'll go ahead and fold it twice by one centimeter. 
going down like so okay and then I will go ahead and fold it like so okay and then I'll head over to the sewing machine and put some top stitches as you can see I'm done top stitching remember we folded it and then we ironed and then put the top stitches and now all you have to do is grab this piece and then put it right here where you had put some markings before and then top stitch along the sides as well but do not fold this section okay so we're done attaching that it came out pretty nicely as you can see so we're going to serge this put some overlock and give it a nice finishing as you can see we're done with this piece so what we're going to do is put it aside and then work on the back pocket okay so um these are my back pieces the back pockets so I'll just flip it over like so, so you can see the markings. I'll just go ahead and fold this once because uh, this material is quite thick and kind of difficult for my machine to like run through. So I'll just fold it once, but normally uh, it's better to fold it twice. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and fold it once, go and iron it, and then I'll come back and do the same for these sides at half inch seam allowance. So um, we're done ironing the sides. What I'm going to do now is put some top stitches only on the top, one running here and the other one down here. But um, if your jean is a bit too stretchy, if your fabric is so stretchy like mine, sometimes it helps to just open it like so and then iron some stiff and then take it to the machine. So mine was a bit stretchy, that's why I decided to uh, put some stiff. You could do it this way or you could just decide to put some stiff underneath like so and then just run the machine okay so as you can see we're done we top stitched this section and then we simply ironed this um, if you want to give your pocket a design detail you can go ahead and stitch like so but I decided to just leave mine as is but if you have a stretching jeans material you can as well put some stiff like so and then go on your machine and just run some stitches here uh, to give it a design detail so there we have it yeah so as you can see our pockets are ready this is for the um, right side of the trouser and uh, for the back pockets I simply top stitched along this line and then I just ironed um, on the sides we do not top stitch on the sides just yet so yep we're done let's go ahead and attach this to the trouser so now what we're going to do is attach the pocket mirror on the right side of the jeans okay this is what they look like the right side of the jeans and make sure that you attach it on the right side of the fabric as well the inner pocket is always on the right leg of the gin and this is what it will appear like when we um, fix this uh, pocket lining onto the pocket this is what it will look like okay so let's go ahead and attach that yeah so as you can see I've placed both pocket mirrors on the lining and uh, don't forget to match your hip notches, okay, on the sides. So yeah, let's go ahead and stitch. So now let's place the pocket lining onto the gym, but make sure that the right sides are facing each other. Make sure they face each other so we'll place it like so okay then we'll go ahead and pin and run this on the machine so let's go ahead and stitch this at half inch seam allowance so we are done stitching at half inch seam allowance so let's go ahead and clip this make sure not to clip your 
not to cut your stitches so go just a little bit close to the edge but you have to be very careful that way it will be easier to uh, fold to give you a nice curve so what we're going to do is just put some top stitches right here so let's put stay stitches along this curve We're done stitching. We've stitched very close to the edge of the curve, just so we can bend this fabric very easily, like so. It helps it bend very easily. So what I'm going to do is fold it and pull it down just a little bit by one millimeter so that this white is hidden completely. going to iron I'll take out a pin at a time <laughs> I want it to be perfect and then I will head over to the sewing machine and I'll stitch close to the edge and then I'll stitch another line um, just below so let's go ahead and stitch as you can see I placed the ordinary threads here and then the others on the bobbin and I fed them to the machine the ordinary way so yeah, this is what you can do if you don't have gin threads or if your machine is acting up. Some machines just don't want to use the gin threads. We are done top stitching as you can see and I went ahead and did the same for the other side as well. Now this is where you have to use gin threads. If you don't have gin threads you can use um, two ordinary threads. This is what it looks like underneath. If we were to close it up and flip it over, this is what it will look like. So what we're going to do now is to um, seal the bottom of the jean pocket. Okay, so now we are going to stitch the, the closed. We're going to close the bottom of the pocket. All you have to do is uh, put some pins here. If you prefer, you can do it this way. You can put pins and stitch along this line at half inch seam allowance up to here. And then simply place this onto the jean itself and stitch along the edge just to attach the pocket to the leg. And then you'll also come here and do the same thing. Stitch it up to here or you can do it some other way. I prefer to open it like so and then make sure that the wrong sides are facing each other like so uh, for a better look. So what I'm going to do is uh, put some pins then I'll go over to the machine and stitch at half inch seam allowance So this is what it looks like. You can go ahead and put some top stitches right here. And if we flip it over, this is what it looks like. Okay. Like so. So let's put some top stitches here nice and neat just flip it over like so 
and then make sure to match these marks where your curve is so make sure it's nicely flat and then stitch from this pocket point stitch along the edge and then you also come here and stitch along the edge just to hold that pocket and then we'll do the same thing for the left leg all done so here we have piece one which is the fly facing you should trace it directly off your leg pattern to get the exact shape okay this this is the leg pattern and I prefer to trace it exactly off this pattern so that I can get the real shape and as you can see I put one centimeter seam allowance here and then half inch seam allowance for the rest of the pants so these are the two pieces this is the left um, facing left fly facing only cut one out of fabric and this is the right fly facing uh, this one I cut um, on fold I cut it on fold if we open it it looks something like this okay so for this one to avoid the middle seam okay this is what it looks like on the inside I actually folded it like so okay and then I got this piece right here folded off the um, facing and then I simply just placed it there and cut okay so now what we're going to do is just simply um, put some overlock on the sides on the raw edges okay so I'm done serging these two pieces it's always good to serge the raw edges so that they do not fray okay so we did go ahead and serge these two so now what I'm going to do is just um, put this onto the pants yes so this will go here and then this one will go here on the right side let's start with the left leg when you're making a jean it always has to be the left leg so we'll just get this piece flip it over like so and place it right here and then we'll put some pins and stitch make sure that the right sides are facing each other we're done stitching from here to here at one centimeter seam allowance okay so let me just flatten this out a bit you can go ahead and iron if you want and then yeah, just simply fold and pin so we'll stitch from this point right here we'll stitch from this point all the way up about six millimeters or seven millimeters from the edge okay so we're done stitching from this point to that point I began from here and I went all the way up next we're going to open this just like a book like so and then we'll place our zip here it's always better to get a small zip but unfortunately this one's too short and this one's too big but we can make it work so all you have to do is find the right zip for you but in case you don't it's better to use the longer zip so what we'll do is get your zip and put it at the edge turn it turn it upside down and put it right at the edge we've positioned our zip at the very edge as you can see and it is upside down and normally I like to put my zip do you see this curve I like to place my zip three millimeters away from this line so if I were to open it this is the bottom line and I've placed my zip three millimeters just three millimeters above and now I'm just going to stitch right here along the edge so we're done stitching along this line and this is what it looks like okay it's just and yeah there we have it 
let's get this out of the way okay so now next what you're going to do is to get this um, outer zipper out of the way before you top stitch so we need to tuck this away so that we can stitch top stitch this area without stepping on the outer zip top stitch from this section go all the way down come here go up turn and go all the way up and this way we won't be able to step on this uh, folded part of the zip because we'll need to attach it on the other fly so let's go ahead and stitch that so yeah there you have it we went up down came here turned here you have to leave something small on the side and then went back up okay yep as you can see this was nicely tucked away that's why we didn't step on it so let's just remove the threads and continue grab our other piece okay and uh, here along the raw edge make sure that these two points are meeting okay like so you can also look from up here just make sure that everything is nicely balanced and then you're going to move it slightly outside like so okay and place your zip right here close to the edge as you can see everything is perfectly aligned and I have put the zip about five millimeters away from the edge. So what I'm going to do is stitch along this line. Okay, so now we are going to join the right leg onto the left leg. Fold the one centimeter seam allowance down like so. And I'll make sure I'll fold up to this section somewhere where the fly zip fly ends so this is the curve I went ahead and drew it so that you could see it well and we're done folding this so what I'm going to do is just grab this make sure it's aligning perfectly and then I will put it at this section okay and then I will look out for where my facing ends. So my facing ends somewhere here. So what I'm going to do is put a little mark, slightly three millimeters above the uh, facing somewhere here. And then I'll go ahead and cut here. Make sure you do not go past this line you have to uh, clip it carefully okay like so and then what we'll do is fold it this side like so and then this one will stay like so and then we'll go ahead and take it to the ironing board okay as you can see it's nicely ironed so what i'm going to do is just grab it and place it here okay make sure that these are aligning if i were to close so i will place it here and i'll go ahead and stitch all the way down okay yeah, so make sure these parts are aligning and um, as you can see we're done attaching the zip uh, we put it slightly about five millimeters away there's always an invisible line somewhere here that I follow on the zip so this is how I've positioned my zip and my facing so I'll go all I'll stitch all the way down and then go around, make a corner, and then come all the way up. 
I went ahead and changed the presser foot and I put a zipper foot. This way I'll be able to stitch close to the zip. So when I'm done stitching the area with the zip, I switch back to the ordinary zipper foot so that it can hold this area um, better. I'll use this line to guide me as I stitch. There we have it. So I'll do the same thing for this side. I'll simply open it and then I will fold this seam allowance like so. so. I'll put some pins and then I will place it on top of this one. So what I'm going to do now is simply grab this section and make sure that I hide this seam. Okay, so I'll grab it and put it like so. Make sure that this seam is hidden. It's completely tucked away. I'm going to stitch along this line. When I get to this point, I'll go up by one centimeter, turn, join this line and stitch all the way down. This is what it looks like on the other side. See how it turned out. It's a clean job. I also put some stay stitches here just to keep the fly uh, nicely locked up in place, nice and neat. Yeah, so let's just make sure to secure this pocket in place. And we'll do the same thing for this side. So now what we're going to do is attach the pockets. Let's go ahead and attach the pocket. This is what it looks like. We'll do the same thing for the other side. I stitched right at this point. I went down like so, went back up turned, went down again, went back, up, and voila! And now we're going to attach this piece, the back yoke. So we'll flip it and pin. As I was pinning, I realized that this piece, the yoke, wasn't long enough to get to the very end. It kind of stops here. But um, no big deal, we can just easily adjust that. Okay, so I went back to the pattern piece and I realized that this was 25 uh, centimeters and this one is about 24.2. So what I did, I added the extra that was missing. And I'm just going to go and cut another yoke piece and then attach it to the trouser. Plus, I'll put my half inch seam allowance on the side. Okay, so now that we've fixed that, let's go ahead and stitch here. Um, you'll stitch at half inch seam allowance, and then we'll go ahead and put some overlock. Okay guys, we're done attaching. Now let's go ahead and iron it, and then serge it as well, just to keep it from fraying. We're done ironing and serging it, but make sure when you serge it, this is the top part, not this one, this right here, because we're going to make it face up and then we will put some top stitches. So I'll just go over to the machine and put my top stitches. One close to the edge and the other about 
seven millimeters away from the edge. Okay, there we have it. So we're going to join this point to this point and make sure that they match exactly. So we'll start from here. Okay, so let's go over and just stitch just this little section. Stitched from here to here. As you can see, they are perfectly aligned. Let's go ahead and open it. Now that we have this firmly secured, we're going to go back and stitch all the way down using half inch seam allowance. Come out perfectly. Okay, so what we're going to do is put some uh, overlock. I went ahead and labeled this right leg and left leg. Your top overlock has to be on the right leg. Okay, so we're done. So before we go ahead and top stitch it, make sure that you open it and make sure that this seam falls on the left leg. Okay, it has to be the left leg. So let's flip it over, pin and top stitch. So here, make sure that this, this line is perfectly aligning with the seam allowance. Okay, that's why I put the needle here. Okay, nothing's like peeping out, it's perfectly aligned. And then you go ahead and stitch from this point. You go all the way up and then turn, come back all the way down. Okay, so we're done. This is how it turned out. To match these. Yeah, as you can see, they're perfectly aligned now. So let's just go and stitch the inner seam. We're done. Top stitch close to the edge. Okay, so we're done top stitching, as you can see on the sides. Attach the side seams. So yeah, I already sagged the side seams and now I have top stitched only up to the hip, just slightly below the hips, you know, just to give it a firmer grip on the sides. I went ahead and did the same thing for this side. So put some serge your side seams and then um, top stitch only up to around the hip area. Let's make the belt loops. You will cut one long piece and then put overlock on one side. And then you'll just simply fold it like saws. Okay, and then fold this one on top. and. We'll put some pins just to hold it in place and then you will stitch both sides close to the edge. I've marked where I'll be placing my belt loops. I will position the west band on this line and then I normally like to put the belt loops one centimeter or nine millimeters away from the west band. Yeah, so this is where I would like my belt loop to fall. So I will go ahead and attach the belt loops up here and then they will fall down here. Okay, we're done attaching the loops. 
now we have to now we're going to attach the waistband so this is my waistband I cut it on fold cut it on fold as you can see and then I also went ahead and marked the seam allowance now we're just attaching the waistband as you can see um, it's always good to increase on the length of the waistband just in case you get to this point and it's not enough so this is what I usually do I cut the waistband and then I add um, some amount of length just in case but when I get to this point I'll just go ahead and cut somewhere here and fold and uh, since we used a long zip as I'm running my machine on this seam I like to mark this point just to remind myself that there is a zip that way I'll be able to stitch carefully around this area just to make sure the needle doesn't break okay so this is what it looks like uh, what we're going to do now is cut the excess zip then we're just going to fold it like so and then we'll close the edges on both sides we'll stitch here and we'll also go ahead and stitch right here so I stitched the waist at half inch uh, seam allowance and I opened up the seams and ironed it to make it flat and now um, as you can see I've already folded this seam allowance and stitched right here now we're just going to flip it over Next, we're going to fold our loops. Okay, and then we'll just go and stitch close to the edge all the way around. We've placed our belt loops. Okay, as you can see, yeah, all right, and we stitched all the way round, as you can see, all the way round to the top, and then we came down here. My machine has been giving me lousy stitches, but the show must go on. I'll have it fixed. Okay, let's go ahead and attach the hem. to this line yeah so make sure you iron this um, before you take it to the machine but I won't be ironing mine because for some reason when I iron it makes it a bit difficult for my machine to run since I haven't had it serviced in a while but please go ahead and iron and then go ahead and stitch close to the edge There we 
have it. Time to fix the buttonhole. Okay guys, as you can see my buttonhole is ready. It came out really nicely. But before I did that, I changed the um, presser foot to a buttonhole presser foot, this one. And then I pulled this little thing down and pushed it all the way down. And then I pushed it behind. And then I put the size of the buttonhole that I wanted. Okay, the button that you put will determine the size of the buttonhole. But before you stitch, please make sure there's nothing, no fabric at the end of this um, presser foot. Okay, let's say I'm stitching and then my jeans happen to like rub off on it like so's. The buttonhole will become very small. It will probably stitch up to maybe somewhere here. Um, halfway you won't get the right size that you want so just make sure that there is no fabric um, at the edge of the buttonhole it has to be completely um, away because as I was stitching I kept on stitching and it gave me small buttonholes and I kept wondering why and then when I checked it was actually my fabric that kept um, holding on to the edge of the buttonhole so just make sure that you have your fabric out of the way so yeah that's it okay guys so we're done you can go ahead and put your rivets but i opted for the metallic button so far uh, so good